Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Matthew 28, verses 19 through 20. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also, not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 3.21 As we talk about baptism, we need to understand that it is a command. It's not an option. Now, we are not saying that if somebody receives Christ and they're not able to get to a body of water to be baptized, that they can't be saved. That is not what we're saying. But we're saying that if you have, and most, most of us will, have the opportunity to carry out what Jesus commanded, be baptized. Nobody should be resisting baptism that says that they're a believer. So let's go on. We need to understand that it is a command. Jesus says, go ye therefore into all the world, to every nation, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's exactly what he means. If you're going to obey everything he's taught you, you need to obey baptism. Now, we know that baptism is not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. It's not like taking a bath to getting rid of your the you know the stink of your body, but rather it's the answer of a good conscience. And we're going to get into what the conscience is in the life of the believer. But I just want to make a note of it in passing. When your conscience is purified, you actually have the ability to think like Jesus. And so it's very important that your conscience be purified. Your mind has to be renewed, but your conscience has to be purified. So this answer unto a good conscience is what baptism is all about. Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, Acts 2.38. Now I want to bring out the scripture so that you can see that upon them receiving Christ, as Peter is preaching the gospel, he's telling them, repent and be baptized and receive Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. So you see here, baptism is associated with being born again. If you're repenting, that means you're of the age of accountability. This is why I do not believe in infant baptism. Baptism is applied the moment you come into faith, you are to be baptized. And that baptism symbolizes that you have died to your sins and that your sins are forgiven. So remember how necessary baptism is. I'm going to say it again. If a person says, oh, you don't have to be baptized to be saved, he's not obeying the scriptures. The scriptures are clear that we are to be baptized. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. The scriptures are emphatic here. It's equating baptism to death. But when you go down into the water, you're saying that you've died to the old life. I'm going to tell you right now, the baptism of, of, of the baptism in water is very serious. You know, we want to say, oh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the only thing important. No, baptism in water is important because this is what you're saying that you're receiving. 
not only the remission of sins, but the sin, the sinful lifestyle and thinking you have died to because you were baptized into Jesus' death. So in other words, when Jesus died on the cross, you died. Because when you're baptized, you're saying that I have entered into Christ's death because he died for me to give me life. When you come back up out of the water, you are rising from the dead, and bap baptism is symbolizing that. You're coming out of that water, you're coming out of sin, and you're coming into new life in Jesus Christ. So as you see, baptism is significant because remember, the original baptisms were all public. It wasn't private and family only stuff. You did it right in front of everybody, in front of all the people that opposed you, everything. When you were baptized, you were baptized. And it was a big deal. We don't make it a big deal today, but it should be. When you are listening to me preach, I am not trying to be dogmatic. I'm just trying to get you to a place where you will respect the scriptures. If you haven't been baptized, you need to. Some of you will experience something that you've never experienced before if you would just submit to being baptized. Whoever told you you don't have to be baptized to be saved is lying to you. It is a command from Jesus himself. We talked about it in March 16. So be baptized as Jesus has commanded you and understanding that this work of being buried with him in baptism. Remember, we, we, we talked about in the last video, it ha something has to happen on the inside of you first. You must be circumcised of heart. Something on the inside of you has to be willing to allow the spirit to bring you to a place of death to the old life. And your heart is circumcised. The, the sinful tendencies are cut away by an operation of the spirit. But baptism is the, the symbol of it and the proof that you've received it and that this is the way you're going to live. Now, there are a lot of people who are baptized and act like demons. I, I've heard of that and I've, I've even seen a lot of that. But that is not the way God meant for it to be. This is why I had the last video first, because you need to understand, you need to experience Jesus Christ. You need to experience salvation after repenting of your sins, but you need to also accept the fact that you died to the old life and now you're being baptized because you're coming up out of that water a brand new person. If you will participate in the death of Jesus, you will participate in the life of Jesus. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses. Colossians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Baptism is pure identification with Christ. You identify with his death, you identify with his life. But it must be experienced first, as we talked about. You need to experience a circumcision of heart or a cutting away of the old heart, the old nature. Ezekiel 36, 26 says he takes it out. It's an operation of the spirit. This is why repentance is laid first. If the work is done in repentance early on, you're not going to struggle as much being born again because you understand that you're dying to that. You're turning away from that. And when you're born again, you understand that you're going down in the water, waters of baptism to become a new person in life. Well, I sure hope this was a blessing to you. We're going to try to keep it simple. We're going to try to keep it short. But I want you to understand how serious baptism is. And if you really weren't knowledgeable of your baptism, if you did it because of tradition or somebody pressured you, I'll be honest with you, be baptized again. Be baptized according to the faith that you have in Jesus Christ, not according to tradition 
or what your parents made you do or anything like that because baptism is that important and I guarantee you you probably will experience something in your walk that's different because you've submitted to it. Well, God bless you. We're going to get into more of this. And remember, Jesus Christ is coming again.